uh, I'm not blowing anyone's mind here, yeah? The, the phone's been out for a while. But I finally get to play with one, and I want to share my thoughts. Xperia 5 Mark III conclusion, it's a great phone if you care about features and voting with your wallet. I think you're going to like it, especially for folks coming off of Galaxy S9s and S10s. There is no premium, smaller form factor, feature-rich device left. They're all gone. Seriously, the last Samsung I truly enjoyed was the S10e. If you've been complaining about how all nicer Androids these days are basically mini tablets, tablets, you have one phone left to vote with your wallet. I'm increasingly impressed with Sony manufacturing. The original Xperia 5 was pretty svelte, but we've seen two generations now where Sony has been able to subtly shrink the outer dimensions and pack more tech inside. For the 5 Mark II, it was a bigger battery. For the 5 Mark III, it's a two-staged, periscoped telephoto camera. I really enjoy Sony's interpretation of premium tier. Where this phone makes compromises, it's in minor aesthetics or in some lifestyle tech that does not distract from the core mission. Building a phone like the camera team would build an alpha mirrorless camera. There's a great screen on tap. Not just 1080p and high refresh, but includes a black frame insertion setting to even further increase clarity for gamers. The starting storage of 128 gig feels a little lean in 2022, but the hook is memory card expansion, and I can easily and comfortably load all of my software on 128 gigs and then move all of my media to the memory card, especially when you can triple the phone storage on a card fast enough to easily write 4K video for like 30 bucks. When was the last time you got a 256 gig upgrade for 30 bucks? And that media space is handy. This is a great multimedia phone. I own a ton of music in FLAC and I subscribed to Kobuz primarily to step up my playlists at the highest possible quality I can for offline listening. The speaker and headphone tech is solid. There's a critical focus on distortion, or better phrased, minimizing distortion. I wish Sony's headphone amp was a little beefier, but on good consumer cans or even really expensive premium IEMs, the listening experience is going to be above average. Better still, the headphone jack doubles as a resource for content creation, where if you can remember how cables work, you can feed a line in to record audio. Now, I find Sony's cameras are always going to be divisive, but I truly don't believe there is such a thing as a winner camera. You as the consumer need to be really honest with your personal preferences. For myself, I don't particularly enjoy the unicorn puke trend of HDR on a lot of auto mode and AI phone cameras. A Sony might be a bit more prone to clipping some highlights, but it genuinely delivers some of the most natural processing you can find from a phone. Doubled with the dedicated shutter button and the scary good autofocus, there is literally no faster way to land a shot than with an Xperia. If the choice is nail the shot but apply a filter on Instagram, or miss the shot but get prettier HDR, I know which side of that I'm gonna pick. As a brief aside, we've been good on phone cameras for years now. Anyone acting like it's such a chore to get a good photo out of an Asperia, that really isn't a knock against the phone anymore. That's just someone showing off that they're bad at tech and really bad at photography. Throw this into auto mode, most people gonna be fine. But yeah, the selfie game is kind of lame. You know, I would recommend getting a clear case and using the mirror finish on this phone to line up your selfies with the rear camera. I think you'll be a lot happier. The front camera is gonna be fine for video calls. Every camera has pros and cons, and Sony is one of the few brands left not trying to copy Apple's pros and cons, and I think that deserves more of a thumbs up. Of course, we're talking about a phone hitting this market in 2022, and we're using a Snapdragon 888. So we do need to keep an eye on thermals and performance, but I find the Xperia has been better than average. A lot's gonna depend on ambient temperature these days. I went 
over 30 minutes on a single clip of 4K 60 frame per second video in my office at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I feel that's fine. If you're maxing out the screen brightness while kicking on the 5G modem and you're out in direct sun on a really hot day, your clips are gonna need to be a little shorter. I don't think that's too hard to understand. When driving a phone to its upper limit, we have to know there are going to be some limitations. Now, a few phones have handled this SoC better. A few phones have handled it demonstrably worse. This is one of the main points worth considering though. When people complain about the 5 Mark III being too late, if SOC is the consideration, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 delivers more performance, but also draws more power and runs warmer. So what benefit do you get from 10% more CPU power if your battery drains more than 10% faster and the phone might run more than 10% warmer. We could point to the improvements to the ISP, but those are often resolution-based, where Sony phones often go for sensor size and autofocus speed over packing more and more megapixels onto their sensors. So I don't think the A88 is gonna be too much of a detriment for photography over the next year. Now, I think it's fair to bring up uh, some concerns over GPU performance for gaming. And that is one area where the next round of chips might have a more demonstrable edge. But again, we're going to need to see if you can maintain all of that performance in a phone that you can physically hold in your hands. Oh, hey there, just a quick interruption. I'm trying something out on somegadgetguy.com because we know YouTube is absolutely miserable about really sending out notifications on new videos, even when you smash the bell icon, but please keep smashing bell icons because algorithm. If you head over to somegadgetguy.com slash subscribe, there's a whole list of playlist and RSS links that you can use to customize your own feed of Some Gadget Guy content. Maybe you only want to watch my Sony videos and my headphone videos, that's something you can do through a, an RSS feeder app or a podcast app, and you'll get better notifications than what YouTube sends out. Once again, somegadgetguy.com slash subscribe, customize your own Gadget Guy feed, and I thank you for your support. Which brings me to one of my favorite points about Sony reviews. This company offers one of the better peace of mind platforms for battery health. HS Power Control is a fantastic feature to include with an SoC known for running warm, and there's still the best collection of controls to manage battery degradation over time. You give up the fastest charging, and there is no wireless or reverse charging on the 5 Mark III, but this showcases the primary mission. You want a smaller phone with a larger battery. You know, cutting a feature like Qi charging to deliver that means you cut a less power efficient way to charge the phone. So, Sony's timing for North America, not great. I think we can all acknowledge that. I really wish the United States mattered more to other manufacturers. I mean, Xiaomi can make it to the number one in sales worldwide while completely ignoring the USA. Increasingly, I worry that other labels are going to start slow playing this continent because the carrier game here is so toxic to healthy competition. Companies are going to manufacture and sell phones where they can make money on those phones. Sony's smartphone division is showing consistent growth, and profits. They're not going to make phones just to have them sit on store shelves and sold off later at fire sale prices. Sony is not LG. And Sony phones hold on to their resale value remarkably well. But for any concerns about timing, at least we can be fairly confident that if you pick up an Xperia 5 Mark III early in the year, you're not likely to see an Xperia 5 Mark IV anytime soon. My final verdict, if you live in the USA, you're running out of vote with your wallet phones, not just for your phone upgrade, but also for the people in your circles of family and friends. People who own standalone cameras and aren't afraid of manual settings or a shutter button. People who might not want to have to buy Bluetooth headphones. Folks coming from older Samsungs, when Samsung actually cared about competing against Apple instead of thirstily trying to copy Apple poorly. Or people who just want a nice phone 
which is a little smaller. You might know some folks like that in your circles, but it's probably easier to just let the guy on commission at the local carrier store just sell your friends and family whatever's the most popular. I hear it has a way more powerful new CPU. I will, of course, drop some links below where you can find more information on the Xperia 5 Mark III, where you can shop this bad boy online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators, never been more critical. I greatly appreciate those of you who are checking out the links and maybe shopping some merch down below. That kind of stuff really does keep production rolling on this channel. Full list of all my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, uh, Facebooks and your Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.